Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is your girl Raida. If this is the first time that you're seeing my face, welcome to my channel. Over here, I do take you guys on my journey to becoming a medical laboratory technician. If this is the first time that you're stumbling upon my channel, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are building a little community over here of lab technicians. So today I'm gonna to be providing you guys five studying tips. Make sure you grab your pen and your paper and you write it down. By the way, if you do see me looking down, excuse me, I do have my laptop right here next to me and I have taken notes so that, you know, I don't forget anything. I tend to kind of, you know, go off the deep end sometimes. I'm going to go ahead and list the five tips very quickly and then I'm going to break every single one down and provide you guys a little bit more information for each tip, okay? So the five tips are, number one, pay attention in class. Very crucial, very obvious, but it's Pay attention in class. Tip number two is take notes. Write down important stuff in your own words. Tip number three is to gain better knowledge through mnemonics. Tip number four is to form a study group or to get a partner in the classroom that you can exchange information with. My last and final tip for you guys, which is tip number five. So tip number five for me personally would be put into practice. And by that I mean put into practice everything that you've learned. So now that I've listed the five tips, I'm gonna go ahead and break down all the tips for you in further details, starting with tip number one. So, tip number one, I know it was kind of obvious and you guys are like, well, duh, you have to pay attention in class. A lot of us have cell phones. A lot of us can get easily distracted. I'm not speaking for the general public. I'm speaking for myself and I'm speaking for the things that have worked for me. When you pay attention in class, it does help you learn and it also helps you process information quicker. Paying attention is extremely crucial to you succeeding in this program. Matter of fact, this tip can be applied to any other program. It's important that you do pay attention in class, especially when the teacher is speaking. For me personally, I have developed this habit where once I get into class, I literally will take my cell phone and put it into my bag and I will push my bag to the side. I'm not trying to deal with it. I mean, I'll put my phone on vibrate in case I get a call and it's an emergency. But for the most part, I stay away from my phone as much as I can because I've noticed the more I pay attention in class, the more I'm able to retain information. Don't try to have a side conversation with the other students. Trust me, it's not gonna benefit you. You're gonna be losing out. You don't wanna be back again repeating the same course. You don't wanna be wasting your money going down the drain. So my second tip is to take notes and to write down the important stuff. Okay, so taking good notes in class is an important part to academic success in college, university, even if you're a high school student, paying attention and taking notes kind of go hand in hand. Actively taking notes in class can help you better focus and help you better understand main concepts. The reason why I say this tip is very important is because when you're taking notes in class, it actually helps to build your active listening skills, comprehension of material, and retention. You're able to retain information longer. So also keep in mind in the long run, this tip of taking notes will help you remember better what you hear and what you see. When it comes to taking notes, remember that you're not going to regurgitate everything that your teacher said, but you have to develop a skill where you're writing down important information. Okay, a tip in taking notes would be to focus on main concepts and to also focus on keywords. Obviously, it's nearly impossible to write down every single word that comes out of your teacher's mouth, but if you're able to kind of develop the skill in focusing in on keywords or main concepts, you should be fine. Tip number three is to gain better knowledge through mnemonics. Now, you guys might be asking, what exactly is mnemonic? So for anybody who's in healthcare that's taking anatomy and physiology, it involves remembering a list of terms, functions, and processes. So mnemonics basically is a technique that you can use to improve your ability to remember things. In other words, it's kind of a memory technique to help your brain recall important information. Okay, so it is a simple shortcut that helps us associate the information we want to remember with an image, a sentence, or a word. Keep in mind that mnemonics has been around for a very, very, very long time. Some of these techniques do date back to ancient Greece. So it basically is just a simple way of memorizing information so that it sticks within our brain and can be recalled more easily in the future. I'm going to go ahead and insert a very short video clip to show you guys exactly how mnemonics works. And hopefully you guys can use this as a studying tip to help you become more successful in this field. Hi, 
Lisa, you can remember the suffix lysis like these laser guns. We're gonna play laser tag and it's gonna be so much fun. <laughs> tag your- oh, God, oh no! Oh, I guess little Lisa here didn't know that lysis means to break down, separate, or destroy. A good example of this term can be seen in the pycmonic glycolysis, where the glue laser breaks down glucose, much like poor Lisa. When we're calling the prefix ab, just think of a sweet six-pack of abs. It means far away, so just imagine some buff guy flexing his abs on the beach and blowing an admirer far away. An example of this term is abduct, meaning the movement of a body part away from the rest of the body. For the term leper, or lepro, just think of me, the lucky little leprechaun. Oh, looky, there's me pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Not so fast there, buddy. Ah, a leaping leper has commandeered me gold. Ah. <laughs> you should have known better, little leprechaun. Lepro means leprosy. Take Microbacterium leprae, for example. It's the acid-fast bacteria that causes leprosy. Now if only I had fingers to pick up this gold. You can remember the prefix cata by recalling these cats in a tree. But there ain't enough room on this branch for both of them, so one cat kicks the other off and he falls down to the ground. And this makes sense, as cata means down or downward. A good example of cata is catabolism, which is the breakdown of complex molecules in living organisms into cells. So just to kind of let you guys know, also there are different forms of mnemonics that you can use. So for me specifically, the three types of mnemonics that I normally use would be acronyms, rhyming, or imagery. Those are the three that usually work for me. But for you guys, it might be something completely different. Um, but look into mnemonics, it's extremely helpful. It comes in extremely handy for this particular field with all of the medical terminology that we need to memorize. It is something to definitely keep in mind and to definitely look into. Moving on to tip number four. So the fourth tip that I have for you guys is to form some type of study group. Keep in mind, it doesn't necessarily have to be a group. It could be with another partner or it could be with multiple people in your class, but make sure you do have someone else in your class that you can talk to, that you can take notes off of. So forming a study group is very important because sometimes other members in your class can actually inspire you to do your work. When you study in a group, you actually learn the information faster. So when you study with other students, you do get a fresh perspective on topics. The cool thing about that is sometimes that will help you learn a topic thoroughly. And when you study in a group, you do tend to learn new studying skills or you tend to develop new studying skills because you have the opportunity to observe a wide variety of studying methods. You can actually improve your own studying regimen by incorporating the best methods with your own. So tip number five, which is my last and final tip is put into practice. And by that, I mean, put into practice every single day, if not every single day, every other day, what you have learned. I know this kind of may sound redundant. You know, I'm saying the same thing over and over again, but believe me, practice makes perfect. So make sure you're reviewing your notes as much as you can. Make sure you know you're quizzing yourself. There's so many different websites and apps that you can use to quiz yourself. I use Quizlet often. It's an app that I have here on my, ta my tablet is dead, but it's an app that I have installed here on my tablet. I'll randomly sometimes grab my tablet and I will quiz myself on medical terminology. There's so many things that you can do. There's quizzes that you can take. There's tests that you can take. There's so many ways that you can learn on Quizlet. If you don't know what Quizlet is, go ahead and download it. If you don't have a tablet, that's fine. You can download it on your phone. And if you don't have a phone and you have a computer, you can actually go to quizlet.com. So that is it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you guys have any video suggestions, do not hesitate to leave me down a comment. So I will see you guys in my next video, which is next week, Sunday. So just keep an eye on my channel. And thank you to all you beautiful people who do watch my videos and do leave me a comment. It is extremely helpful. Um, give me a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.